Good to be back here. Some familiar faces, some new faces. And we're going to work hard this morning uh, in the Word of God. So if we can go to my, uh, what do you call it, my PowerPoint? Is that good? I'm going to look at a word today that occurs 12 times in the New Testament. And the funny thing is, 10 of those times, it has completely different translation. I should uh, introduce my wife, who's here today. And we would make a major contribution to the women's gathering on Friday, if our family was here. Because we have five daughters. <laughs> and we have five granddaughters. And then one of my daughters got it completely wrong and had a son. <laughs> but she's pregnant again, and it's a daughter. So it's going to be 11 to 1. Wow. Have we got the PowerPoint or not? I can't see it. Uh, anyway, Luke chapter 4. Um, it says in verse 38, 39, after Jesus left the synagogue, he entered Simon's house. Then Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked her to help, asked Jesus to help her. So he stood over her, commanded the fever. We were just singing about Jesus delivering from sickness, and it left her. And immediately she got up and began to serve them. Now that in itself is a is a great message, isn't it? That she's sick. She's uh, kind of out of it, and Jesus heals her, and the first thing she does is to get up to serve. So that's a, a picture of the Christian life, if you like, that when we really find Jesus, we serve. Now, um, the word, when it says Simon's mother-in-law, reading from my translation, was suffering from a high fever, uh, same in yours, the word there is a word called suneco. The word is a word suneco. In other words, Luke uses a word saying not just she's sick, but she's seriously sick. And the kind of seriously is a word called suneco. The word, that's the word that's used 12 times in the New Testament. Eight times are negative in one way or another, four times a positive. And to me, it stands, it, it's kind of like a driver. So Neko stands for the power, the influence, the event in our lives that's driving us. So we're going to look at them. And I'm not sure the way the PowerPoint's formatted, whether we're going to manage that or not, but we'll do our best. The eight negative times, three of them refer to sickness. If you go to Matthew 4:24, the news about him spread through all Syria, and they brought to him all who were ill, those suffering with various diseases. Suffering here is suneco. And then if we can do this, let me see. I need to go down the bottom one, please, to the eight, eight, eighth one. And again, down. This is going to be difficult. We'll have to go back and forth. And it happened that the father of Publius was lying in bed, afflicted with a current fever and dysentery. And Paul went to see him. And after he had prayed, he laid his hands on him and healed him. So Luke, Peter's mother-in-law, Matthew, the one we just looked at, and the last one, or the eighth one actually, Matthew 28, 8, all refer to sickness. So the picture is of people whose lives were driven by the fact that at that, that time they were sick. They were ill, seriously ill. We went to long, line, long, long colleague of ours yesterday, went to see her mum in hospital. Her mum is about to go and be with Jesus. So the sickness that's on her completely controls her identity at the moment. Okay, we need to go back up again if, uh, if we can. Okay, now the second one, Luke 8.37 and all the people of the country of the Gadarenes and the Gerasenes and the surrounding district asked him to leave them, for they were gripped with fear and got into the boat, and he got into the boat and returned. Their gripped with fear is actually the same word as the three ones about being sick. It's like, again, fear 
is the dominating force. Fear comes on them, and their whole lives at that point are influenced, are controlled by fear. Fear of what? Fear of what Jesus had just done in delivering a man who was filled with demons. Luke 8, 37. And all... Um, sorry, we need to go down one, don't we? Luke 8, 45. And Jesus said, Who is the one who has touched me? And while they were all denying it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing in on you. It's suneco again. Same word again. It's interesting. We got nine different, or ten actually, different English translations. But the original Greek word is the same. Here, it's a sense of people want to touch Jesus. They're not really meeting him. It's not an encounter with Jesus. It's kind of a scrum, like a pop concert, trying to get in the door. But what is influencing them at that time is a sense of, if I could just reach this man, I might get healed. Again, Luke 19.43. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will throw up a barricade against you and surround you and hem you in on every side. Now there again, the, the, the hem you in, that expression, is suneco again. So here it's a sense of, People being controlled by their enemies, their enemies surrounding them, their enemies uh, not letting them have any freedom. Moving on again. Uh, Luke twenty-two sixty-three. Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him and beating him. Holding is suneco. So you have the sense of they weren't just hand on the shoulder. They were tightly controlling him. So that's, in that sense, they were restricting Jesus' movement. Again, the next one. But they cried out with a loud voice. They cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears and rushed on the, at him with one impulse. There, their controller, there, their dominating factor was they didn't want to hear. So they weren't just kind of doing that. They were jamming their hands in their ear in such a way as they didn't want to hear. And then we've seen the other one. So those eight ones, about six different meanings, they're all influences that control people. Different influences. Now, what, what I'm saying is, Seneco eight times is used to mean something that controls our lives from the outside. Sickness, people holding us so we can't move, in such a way as we're captive. In other words, if you speak Chinese, it's bei dong de, not zhu dong de. It's not something we choose, it's something that's brought upon us. Four of them are good, if we can go down again to the next one. Four of them are positive. Uh, Jesus says, Luke twelve fifty, but I have a baptism to undergo and how distressed I am till it's accomplished. Here, the the... The distressed is suneco again. It's exactly the same word as the people who are sick or anything. But here, Jesus is in control. Here, the driver for Jesus is to do the Father's will. It's not, as I said just now, beidungda. It's not a force coming on him that compels him, he's sick or whatever, or people uh, hemming him in or controlling him or holding him tightly. It's the, the purpose of God in the life of Jesus is that which controls him. Again, Paul, Acts 18.5, when Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began devoting. Devoting is suneco. Paul began devoting himself completely to the word of God, uh, to, to, to the word, solemnly testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. What you see here is Paul's driver is he wanted to tell people about Jesus. Before Silas and Timothy came, he could only do that part-time because he had to, uh, if you're familiar with the expression, tent make. He had to work by day to earn enough to put food on the plate so that he could preach in the evening. When Silas and Timothy come, they earn the money so that Paul can preach full-time. What's Paul's driver? I want to share Jesus. What's Paul's engine? I want to be free to tell people about Jesus. Okay, next two. Let's try again. 2 Corinthians 5.14. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded 
this, that one died for all, therefore all died. Here, Suneco is the love of Christ controls us. The control is Suneco. So here again, the Suneco is positive. It's a sense of having encountered Jesus, having found Jesus as not a second hand or because somebody mentioned him, but because he's real to us. And because he's real to us, we want to share him with others. And the final one, Paul says, I'm hard-pressed. Hard-pressed is Seneco. From both directions. One is, I want to go and be with Jesus. The other is, I probably better stay with you guys. His Seneco really is, I really would like to get out of here and go and be with Jesus. But for your sakes, he says, I'll stay behind. So you see, in those four, um, Jesus, I have a baptism to be baptized with, I'm distressed. I'm sunechoed until it's uh, accomplished. Paul suneco himself to the word. For the love of Christ sunechoes us, having, con having concluded that one died for all, therefore all died. And Paul, I'm hard-pressed. I'm sunechoed from both directions, needing to suneco to be with you, but actually much rather suneco to go and be with Jesus. So eight are external forces that control our lives. Four are the love of Jesus in us becomes our driver. Now, I want to suggest that's probably eight to four is a good breakdown of how most of us are. In other words, probably one third of Christian believers are, are really flowing with God. Two thirds are struggling. We may know Jesus, but we've never quite got to the point where we're kind of really loose like Paul was to do what Jesus wants us to do. I think that's about average. Now, it's not saying if we're really running with Jesus, then everything is going well. Because Jesus' is suneco is, is to go to the cross. That wasn't a, a prosperity experience. Well, it was actually for us, but it wasn't for him. Paul facing extreme persecution at times. So I'm not saying if, if you've got the Jesus Suneco, everything is beautiful. You'll have seven Mercedes and uh, some nice mansion somewhere in Taipei or whatever. What I'm saying is if, if you're controlled by Jesus, then the Suneco is a positive Suneco. It leads you in a place where you're right with God and right with men. And I want to say that for many believers, I actually don't think that's so. And I, I, I'm going to go into this why, but let me recount a conversation I had yesterday. Uh, was with a, a couple, she's Taiwanese, he's um, uh, South African actually. And we, he was sharing his experience of, of coming to Taiwan probably not long now and feeling, well, some of the churches he visited he didn't feel people were really on fire for the Lord. I said, that, that's not a church or church thing. That's an individual thing. Amen. Yes. It's an individual thing. Because there are two experiences, in my view, at least in the Christian life. One is where we accept Jesus as Savior. The other is when we let him be Lord of our lives. And they may come at the same time. But in my case, and I suspect in most cases, they didn't. Because as a student at university, um, and that was 200 years ago, uh, <laughs> God came to me and he said, son, you're, I'm your savior, I'm not your Lord. And it was a battle, it was a struggle, and I surrendered my life to the Lord. He won, I'm glad to say, and I was filled with the Spirit at the same time. That actually completely changed the direction of my life. Uh, tomorrow marks the day when 50 years ago I came to Taiwan. Came to Taiwan on... April the 8th, 1969. It wasn't yesterday. But it, it, that wasn't, could I put it this way? That wasn't my decision. Because the last thing, actually most of you, I may have uh, not here yet. That, that wasn't my decision, if I could put it that way. It was when I surrendered my life to Jesus in that way. It wasn't to come to Taiwan and serve the Chinese church or whatever, it was just putting my life in his hands and saying, your will be done. 
And shortly after that, he very clearly called me to something I had never considered before, to be a lifetime missionary and to serve the Chinese church and people. That was his choice. But it, it wasn't, okay, here's the deal, sign on the dotted line. It was, son, I want your life surrendered to me. I want you to give it to me. I often use the illustration. It's like driving a car. For many believers, we drive, Jesus is in the passenger seat because he forgives our sins and that's really comfortable and nice and all that kind of thing. Actually, the deal is he wants to drive. And we don't even get a Daohang. We don't even get a GPS. <laughs> he is the GPS. He decides. And the fantastic thing is, I want to say to you, that's the only, only satisfying way. Now, is it easy? No. Is it... Uh, from the point of view of cars and houses and this kind of thing, nope, nope. But is it good? Yes. Is it fulfilling? Yes. Is it satisfying? Yes. Would I, 76 later this month, would I do anything else if I could rewind the clock? No, because his way is the best way. So what I'm suggesting to you is that some of us, we do know Jesus, but we've never come to the place. See, we sing those songs about how good God is. How much do we actually believe them? Because if we really believe them, this is what we do. We put our lives in God's hands and say, you drive, not me. I remember many years ago, I often think of it. I taught at uh, Taida, Taiwan University, um, about 48 years ago. That is scary, isn't it? The guys I taught are already retired. <laughs> and uh, there was a guy who did accept the Lord. He was a mechanical engineer. Have no fear. I was teaching English, not mechanical engineering, about which I know zip. But I was teaching English, and, and what, what my aim in teaching English in Taiwan University was I wanted to be the best English teacher there so that I had the right to share about Jesus. Uh, I didn't want to goof off teaching English so I could preach. I, I wanted them to know that there was a standard of excellence in my life which gave me the right to share about Jesus. And this guy came to the Xiaoyuan uh, Tuan Shi, to the uh, student fellowship of which I was also involved at the time, and then for a long while, I didn't see him. And I met him on campus, and I said, hey, uh, where, where'd you go? And he said, well, I want to go to America when I graduate, and I'm afraid Jesus wouldn't let me go. <laughs> and I thought, is that really the relationship you have with Jesus? That you've got to keep your distance from him in case he does something you don't want to do. I mean, can I say sometimes the Suneco is that driver? The Seneca is that driver that I, I got to drive it. I got to control it. And when we do that, all these other things come in that so easily divert, that so easily push us in the wrong direction. I don't know if I mentioned last time or, or time before, but let me share this that really, really blessed me. Um, that particular class, the first class I taught, I think, Four years later, obviously, they graduated. And a few years ago, they, a guy phoned me up and he said, we are your class of whatever it was. Um, this is our 40th year since we graduated. And I said, oh, good. He said, would you, would you come and eat with us? I said, yeah, good idea, free meal, why, why not? <laughs> now, now, he was a believer. This is the fascinating, I never... People say, do you understand Chinese culture? Not a bit. He calls me teacher, and he's a professor of electrical engineering at Taiwan University. It should be I calling him teacher, as far as I'm concerned. But you know the culture, that once a teacher, always a teacher, whether you still teach or not. Anyway, after, after the meal, this guy comes up to me, and he says, uh, can I ask you a question? I say, yeah, we can try. Whether you get a sensible answer or not, who knows? And this is what he said. How come you're still saying the same thing 40 years later? <laughs> 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 it's 
do you see the Seneco in that? The Seneco is when we surrender our lives to Jesus, when we put our lives in Jesus' hands, the message never changes. Amen. The message doesn't change because there only is one, one message. Paul, great challenge to me. Um, I love soccer. I, I gather Ernie, that hulk of a guy, where are you, Ernie? Doesn't play soccer. <laughs> Plays volleyball. <laughs> Okay, Ernie, but uh, we, we can put it right, if you like. The, there are lots of things I love. I, I, I like Premier Football. I support a team that gives me heartbreak, so I practice patience and <laughs> Arsenal. Um, I, I like it most ball games. Uh, this afternoon is the boat race. Uh, none of you know that. I'm a Cambridge graduate. Today is Oxford against Cambridge boat race. Really important that the Oxford boat sinks and the <laughs> Cambridge win. There's a 46-year-old guy rowing for Cambridge. Would you believe that? I mean, they're undergraduates or graduates, right? Uh, there's a guy who's 46. He has three, two Olympic medals and four world championship medals, but he hasn't rowed for 17 years. And he went up to Cambridge to do a master's and started rowing again because he said, my kids never saw me row. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that's a Suneco of, of a different guy, isn't it? Driving to one more boat to win, one more thing to add. Uh, okay, if that's your Suneco, live with it. All right, let's see what we got because I don't know how they're going to format this PowerPoint. Uh, yeah, let's keep going. Can you, you control it if you would. Okay. Now, what, what sorts are Seneca? Would you turn with me to a passage I often look at, which is um, uh, Acts chapter 9? Because you get a fantastic definition in Acts 9 of how the Apostle Paul found his Seneca. And if you know the Bible, you'll know this. Acts 9 1. Saul was breathing threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, he went to the high priest, asking of him letters to Damascus and to the synagogues that he found any that were of the way, that is Christians, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Damascus. So Paul Seneco was to destroy the church. Paul Seneco was huge antipathy to Jesus. And as he journeyed, it came to pass, he drew nigh to, to Damascus. Suddenly there shone around him a great light out of heaven, and he fell down to the earth and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Good question, why? Why do I do what I do? I think every Christian should take maybe once every six months a period of quiet where we spend time with the Lord and say, why am I doing what I'm doing? What is actually the reason I'm doing? Is it because people, culture, teachers told me what to do? My, my Chinese name is Ba Tuo Sheng, which is taken from a famous Chinese Christian called Ni Tuo Sheng, uh, otherwise known as Watchman Ni. Watchman Ni was a bright young man, a, a student with a real future. God got a hold of his life. And he's wandering down the street one day, and he meets one of his former teachers, who obviously wasn't a Christian. And the teacher said, Ni, what a waste of your life. Come and have a cup of tea with me, and, and we'll discuss it. And the teacher's saying, you had such a future. You had such a bright future. And the teacher's running him down, and suddenly the glory of God came on. And he was very, very clear. Following Jesus in that way was exactly what Jesus wanted of him. Now we know Watchman Nee's name to this day, but we have no idea who his teacher was. His teacher, Seneco, led to the grave. Watchman Nee led to this day to, through his writings, not necessarily through the church that followed, to a tremendous contribution to Christianity. The second question, first one, why do you persecute me? He said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. The key to the Seneco, when, when we say why, why am I doing what I'm doing, the first key is who, and the who is Jesus. I, I don't know your background. Uh, some of you are new here today. I grew up in a non-Christian family. 
grew up uh, with a dad who was a doctor, a mum who was a government servant, and Rose, if you're British, to be a dame, if that impresses you. She just got one higher. I would be the Honourable Ross Patterson. You'd have to call me Honourable every time you saw me, except you wouldn't, would you? And my, I was actually thanking the Lord for them this morning. My Latin teacher invited me to go to a Christian camp when I had zero Christian background or interest, and there I heard the gospel. And I was giving thanks for the men in my life uh, who mean absolutely nothing to you, but those guys who led me to Christ, who followed me up, who took care of me. Maybe... Sometimes we need to be clear in our relationship with the who, the Lord Jesus. Because that, that scripture union camp, that was the name of the organization, changed my life for time and eternity. Because they shared very simply the gospel, that I had sin in my life, that Jesus had died for me, like we were singing about, and that if, if I invited Jesus into my life, he would come into my life and become my savior and my friend and would change me. And we need to be really, really clear on this in this day and age. Paul, again, saying, I determined to know nothing amongst you but Christ Jesus and him crucified. Because that's the core message. That's, that's what it's about. And I didn't know that. I thought church was radically boring. I actually lied to my mother once so I didn't have to go to church saying I was sick, which I wasn't. And then they showed me how Jesus could be real to me just by inviting him into my life. If, if you talk to Christine, get her testimony. She's a missionary kid, four generations of missionaries in East Africa, Rwanda, Burundi. But that didn't make her a Christian. She herself had to ask Jesus into her life. Because God doesn't have any grandchildren. He only has children. So we need to be clear on that because that's time and eternity. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And then Jesus says to Paul, uh, verse 5, who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. But rise, enter the city, and you'll be told what you must do. Now, my translation, well, it has it in this one, actually. You'll be told what you must do. Chinese translation is slightly different. Is my preferred translation. Okay. The second thing is what? See, God has a what for each of us. And that develops. It can change. Doesn't mean to say the what you have now is the fullness of the what that God wants for you. Go back to Ernie, wherever he's gone. I think he's hiding because I'm persecuting him. But <laughs> where are you? Hey, are we clear on this? The guy makes an announcement and cuts and runs. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, Ernie's doing, um, as I understand it, a master's at the moment. That, that's his what at the moment, apart from serving in the fellowship. That's not going to be his what five years from now. If it is, he better give up and try, try something else. You, you see, it develops until we reach that point. Now, what's your what? Because God has one for you. And, and I want to say this to you, that the what God has for you, that's the call on your life, the purpose of your life. And for Christine, for many years, that was bringing up five daughters. You think that's easy, then dream on. But it's not now. Christine will go Tuesday to Hong Kong to sit down with a missionary working in China who said, please, can you help me? I'm going through some rough waters. That's what she does a lot with mainland Chinese and with foreigners. That's her what at the moment and teaching about that kind of thing. So each of us has a what. And what I want to say is the suneko that we have is simply that relationship with Jesus and what he calls us to do. And from all my heart, I say to you, only that can fulfill. Only that can satisfy. Most, many of my family are lawyers and doctors. 
And if you're a lawyer or a doctor and that's what God's told you to do, do it with all your heart. But that wasn't what God wanted for me, Cambridge degree or not. Now, very quickly, uh, would you go down? If you do, it's probably easier. Okay, reasons we get it wrong. Number one, we have an existing passion, but it's not of God. We just don't want to find the what or the who. That's your choice. But let me just say, if, if you open yourself up that way, the problem is you're driven by other sunekos. I mean, people who give themselves to making money are often driven by a suneco called the state of the market. That's their life. Other people do a number of other things <coughs> and are controlled by those other things. Let me say it again. Only the who, the relationship with Jesus, and the what, what he wants us to do, can satisfy. Okay, number two, if you'd, if you'd help me with this. I have a burning vision within me, but it's not from the Lord, even though it's spiritual. In other words, before I really encountered the Lord in that way, I intended to serve the Lord in England. Um, being a Scotsman, that's kind of cross-cultural, but uh, uh, I'm so glad to be out of there with the Brexit thing going on at the moment. <laughs> but that wasn't what God wanted for me. It wasn't bad, you understand? I might well have been a pastor in England, but it just wasn't what God wanted for me. So maybe you have a suneco that involves you serving in the church, but you haven't yet contacted the one God wants for you. Okay, number three. This is really important. I'm too ordinary. I do not believe that God can or wants to use me. One of my passions is if you love Jesus... You don't say that. Because if you know anything about the church in China, the, the story of the church in China over the last, say, 30 years is a mass of really ordinary people that God has used to build the fastest growing church in the world. In some of the people I've met over the years in China, they're really ordinary people. I, I think of a guy who was actually in prison for 20 years from about 1959 to 79 then had to go to the States because he was going to be rearrested. And we knew him, we loved him. I'd met him in Xiamen before he left China. And I um, went to see him in Chicago where he was living. This was a long time ago, before you had mobile phones. And we landed in Chicago. I get off the plane. Everybody's got people greeting them or places to go. I'm standing there waiting for them to come and find me. And then... Ages afterwards, his wife appeared and said, I'm really sorry, he's driving round and round the airport. He doesn't seem to be able to find his way to this terminal. So we waited for another long time, and then we got, finally got in the car and went. About two miles down the road, he said, I don't know the road, I can't go, I don't know how to get home. So I had to go into a gas station and translate for him to find out how we got home to his home in Chicago. Now you say, that's a pretty ordinary guy. I tell you, that guy was massively used by the Lord in China. See, it isn't about superstars. It's about lives laid down for Jesus. Lives that just say, Lord, you make something of my life. And finally, number four, if we can go down. I keep losing it. I swing back and forth between Paul's passion and Peter's mum sense of overwhelm. In other words, sometimes I feel kind of like Paul and I'm all on for Jesus. Next day, I feel exactly the opposite. And can I share one of, if you'd allow me, one of my secrets is that Christine and I daily spend time with the Lord. We read the Bible and share about what we've read. We pray. Thank you to Taipei City Government for giving us Da'an Gungyuan, the Da'an Park. That's our personal prayer area. If you like to run around, keep out of our way because it belongs to us. We'll not prevent you, but it belongs to us. It's for us to pray in. Um, we probably, what, every week do about 10 times around that park, uh, walking from our home. And the purpose is, is yeah, it's to get some exercise, but it's, it's, to pray for the kids, to pray for the ministry, to, 
to listen to the Lord, to see what he's saying. And worship. You can't be here every, every minute of every day, but you can be on YouTube if you're not a worshiper. Uh, there's no excuse not to worship as long as you have a cell phone, an iPad, a computer, and an internet connection. God gives us all kinds of people. I, I have really, really, I'm watching the clock. I've got about one and a half minutes, so I'll just slip this in. I've really enjoyed I'm No Longer a Slave to Sin. You know that song? A guy called Jonathan David. I mean, voices, I don't know what it sounds like, but it's a great song. Go on YouTube if you don't know how to worship. Search Jonathan David, No Longer a Slave. It's, it, it, you can't help but that song, oh, what, what a beautiful name. Any of these songs that can take us into the presence of the Lord. How would you call? No excuse. We have all that we need from the Lord. So why do we swing back and forth? Because we're not, we're not spending private time with the Lord. Any relationship that doesn't spend time together is going to grow distant. So... What's the Seneco in your life? What's the driver in your life? What's the engine? Is it something in that sense, if I could put it this way, is Jesus controlled or is it randomly controlled? Because you've never really said, Lord, I just want to put my life in your hands. You, you, you just take over. I'm not offering you a prosperity gospel. Please be clear on that. What I am offering you is the only way on the face of the earth to find satisfaction, which is when we walk with the who Jesus and the what that he's called us to. And there's a tremendous missionary brother many years ago, graduate of Yale University, died quite young, but he had a comment. For, what were the three things? No, no reserve, something else. And then as he was dying young, no regrets. No regrets. What a statement to be able to say, because I gave it to Jesus, no regrets. Rather than people who say, I've reached the end of my life, I wish I'd lived it differently. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that, Father, you are a good father. Father, you care for us. Rudy, you might like to come up, actually, would you? You care for us, Lord. Lord, I thank you that there is a way that seems good to a man, and the end of, the way of that way is death. But turning it around, you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. Help us, Lord, to understand that, that the one safe place is the Jesus place. The one safe place is knowing you and walking in your way. Help us really to believe, not just to sing that you're a good father, but to know by experience that you are, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I sense folk might like to do business with the Lord, but I'll leave it to you, okay? Why don't we all stand up? Thank you, Pastor Ross. That was great. I'm going to take a couple of minutes just to worship God and remember His goodness. Pastor Ross was just reminding us He's important. Jesus says He's the way, the truth, and the life. And it's only through Him that we actually find that sense, that purpose in our lives. And His goodness, His promise, as we were just singing during the worship time, is that His goodness follows us. And His desire and His heart for each of us is that we live that wholeness in life that is only found in Him. Amen. So why don't we take a time to worship Him, just sing about His goodness. Because that's, the, that's actually the truth of who He is and what is available for you. So let's sing it together. Close like no other. No 
We thank you that you're in this place, presence of God. And we thank you, Father, that your goodness is following us all the days of our lives, Jesus. I just want to pray for you and I just want to bless you. And maybe some of us might feel that we have been apart from him. And today you're telling him, or today after you heard the message, you want to tell Jesus, like, I want you to be the center of my life. I feel like I have lost sight of, or I've been distracted. But today, I want you to be the center of my life. I want to be close to you. And I know that you're the way, the truth, and the life. And only in you I found that purpose and that sense of wholeness for my life. So if that's you, I just ask you to put your hand in your heart. I want to bless you and just want to pray for you. Father, I just thank you that you're in this place and that your presence is here, Father. Today we heard your word and we know that we need you. We know that it's only in you that we find, that we can find, Father, purpose. It's only you that we can find true happiness, Father. Today, Father, if there's some of us that feel that we have been just like there has been a distance that separates us between, uh, between us and you, Father, Today we tell you, Father, that we, wanna, we want you to be the center of our lives, Father. If there's anyone here, I just bless you and I just pray, Father, that today as your presence is in this place, that you will encounter us, Father. And that we believe, Father, that through the week, through we, I mean, as we go work, as we study, that we will, remind it, we will be reminded of your love, Father. That we're going to walk, Father, knowing that you're our Lord and Savior. And that you're the center of our lives, Father. That we will put you as the center of our lives, Father, today. We thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray.